Lord, we come into agreement with your word, and we do believe in miracles, Father God. Any spirit of a religion that is in here that would try to hinder that move in this church, we command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. We will now submit to it in Jesus' name. The Pharisees came against Jesus. They didn't like what Jesus was doing because he was God in the flesh. He had power. He had authority. And he said that we are the heirs of that in Jesus' name, that we will operate in signs, wonders, and miracles in the name of Jesus. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to be here right now with us. Holy Spirit, be our teacher, be our guide in all things. And God, you are the God of impossible. You, you make all things that are impossible, you make them possible. God, you are the God that can change anything in the name of Jesus. We love you with everything we've got, Jesus. I thank you, Father God, you'll help us learn tonight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I got tongue tied. Well, hello, everyone, this evening. <clears throat> Tonight, we're going to talk about faith. Faith is a huge, big old subject, right? Because faith is like faith in Jesus Christ. I believe that He's my Lord and Savior. I've accepted Him into my heart, right? But then you got other faith, right? And that's when you walk out your, your walk with the Lord and that you heed to the voice of God for every move and anything that you do. And that's another operation of faith. And faith is to move mountains. Faith is to decree and declare a thing and it shall be in the name of Jesus. Faith is when we can command things that are not of God to have to go Things of principalities and rulers of darkness that are trying to be in our territory, in our atmosphere, but doesn't have the right to be here. So we have to use our faith and know we have a legal right to make it go by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. So faith is deep. And when I'm doing this, I just could have went in a thousand directions. And so I was trying to stay focused. <laughs> but... <clears throat> Faith is the power of God's word. Amen. So this word, my Bible's all wrapped up in all kinds of stuff. But this word is power. It's our promises. And it's a sword. Amen. We got to use our sword. And that's about the only way you're about to get through this life is we have to understand this word. It is our sword. It's not our book that sits on the shelf. Amen. It's not going to collect no dust in our life. Amen. So faith without works is dead. So I can hear it all day long, but if I don't do anything about it, it's just not going to happen for me, right? But faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, but I have to put action to it. Amen. So you can call things into existence, the things that do not exist. It's called having a supernatural life. And so I do have the benefit of being raised back in the day of the 70s and the 80s where they called it the faith movement. But I got to tell you something. Did you know Kenneth Hagin didn't write the Bible? He sure didn't. Where did he get that information from? Oh, it was the word of God. It was the promises. They're right here. Now, yes, so not just him. You know, you got Copeland. You got um, Charles Capps. There's many more. Lester, Summerall. But that stuff played in our house all the time without fail. <laughs> we have no, no other TV going on but Channel 40 and Channel 42 back in the day. It's not a bad thing because when I grew up and I wasn't in the church no more, I knew exactly what to do because I was raised in that and I seen that. And I you guys all know that I'm from Indianapolis House of Prayer. I saw crazy cool stuff, <laughs> and I'll never walk away from it, right? We saw healings. We saw signs. We saw wonders. We saw deliverances. We've got amazing things that we got to see there, and that never ends. It only gets greater and better, and we only go into a greater, greater glory in Jesus' name. And the only one that fails in that is not God. It's us. When we don't apply this word, when we don't use this word as the sword, when we don't see that this word is the promises of God. When we don't see ourselves as the heir 
to the kingdom. We don't see ourselves as the heir to Abraham and the blessings. Amen? So, so I love this subject because this is how I rock and roll. This is how we go. Right? So if you know me, I try really hard now to not say negative things. Okay? So like... And I have my friend here from work, and she's the same way. And I love that. How cool is it to be at work? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But, you know, at work, people come in and be like, oh, that sickness is going around. Oh, did you hear about this? Oh, did you hear about that sickness? And she and I are like, mm, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I just plead the blood of Jesus right now. I'm not catching that right now in the name of Jesus. So it's not that you're make believing and pretending that it's not there or that you didn't have a sniffle but it's you standing your ground and taking authority over it ahead of time and claiming these scriptures no I don't think so but by Jesus stripes I'm healed okay I'm redeemed by the blood of the lamb I have benefits in Jesus name and I'm gonna take hold of those things because I am a child of the most high God and you are too so here's a couple of things hmm I have the mind of Christ in Jesus' name, right? And I'm just going to operate and flow only by the power of the Holy Spirit. So when I'm going to tell you these things, don't say me, me, me. That's not what I'm trying to do. But by the word of their testimony, right? So I'm allowed to tell the testimony. So I'm going to tell you the testimony because I want you to understand when we go down this road about faith, this is not because I thought it or because I read it only. It's because I've lived it and because, wow, God's so cool. So he has had... Much mercy and grace on me, as he's probably had on so many. But <clears throat> I think when I was about 16 or so, 17, so the family quit going to church, so I wasn't in church. But when I did get married, um, it was not easy. And um, when we came across situations, I still wasn't in church. But wow. I still had the word still here as a tablet on my heart. I am so grateful for that. So I still always loved the Lord. And when we came across situations, then I would just take authority over it. Because I'm allowed to decree and declare a thing. And so I did. And it would change a thing immediately. And God was so merciful, he would give me warnings for certain things and give me dreams. And... I would wake up and take authority over those negative dreams. Sometimes he gave me positive dreams, and I would confess those into reality also because I'm coming into agreement with what he said. And then, wow, guess what? I'd walk right into it. It was really cool and really neat. So there's, here's an example. If you have a negative dream, you don't let fear take over and do anything. I had dreams back then that the spirit of death rolled up on the side of the house and looked in the window and was after Kevin. And there were certain signs in that dream that tried to tell me that. And so in my dream, I'm rebuking that thing in Jesus' name. And then I wake up and I started taking authority over it. Well, then I had another dream and it revealed some things. So I wake up from that dream. Hmm, what does that mean, Holy Spirit? Then the Holy Spirit gives you uh, understanding and I took authority over that thing. And then, wow, guess what? Kevin comes into the house <laughs> very shortly after that and tells me exactly what was going on. And that dream lined right up to it. But guess what that dream revealed? It revealed that there was a thing going on, and I rebuked it, and he ended up being completely protected. So once Kevin told me everything that was going on, I was completely shocked what God revealed. So why? So that he could heal so that he could deal with it, so that he could protect. If I don't say anything, then I'm not coming into agreement, and I'm not speaking into the atmosphere, I'm not dealing with it, and I'm not releasing the angels to go forth and do the word of God that was spoken, that said, no, he loves Kevin, and God said, no, that's my son, and I got a plan for him. You just can't see it right now, but you're going to come into agreement and know what I see about him. And so that's what amazingly, through the grace and mercy of God, I was able to do. So I'm truly, 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 truly grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I would have dreams about him where he definitely wasn't serving the Lord at the moment. And he, in these dreams, got hit by the glory of God. And it was the coolest thing ever. So he tapped into it a little bit, and he literally jumps back. And he's like, oh, 
Is that the glory of God? Is that what you were talking about? And then it happened again in the dream. So it was like a boom and a boom. And then in, I wake up from that. And again, you go back to the Holy Spirit. What are you trying to tell me, Holy Spirit? See, that's faith. I have to have faith. The Lord's going to answer me, right? I have to recognize when he's trying to speak to me. And this is how you develop relationship with him is when you make sure that you respond. If you ignore it, then why is he going to talk to you anymore? If, he, if I ignore it, then why is he going to give me any more dreams? He's not going to because I'm deaf to it. So anyways, in that dream, he's, he gets in the glory. Then there's another dream that I have the next night, and he is... Uh, decreeing and he's like devil you are a liar in the name of Jesus you are under our feet in the name of Jesus there's a hedge of protection over this family and I wake up out of the dream I'm like what <laughs> no that is not my brain can't even wrap around it because I'm in the flesh right I don't know what God knows but then then I had a third dream so what does three mean confirmation so I'm definitely down to bizwax. God, what does this mean? So God said, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Decree and declare that over your husband. So I did. And guess what? The same thing happened in real life. He showed up to the church. He didn't stay in the back like he wanted to. He said he literally supernaturally floated up to the front when they called you up to release the joy of the Lord on you. And he was, Kevin, don't play. He's very calm, and he ain't going to do something unless God moves his rear end or if that's what he wants to do. So it's not like he was floating by a song or an emotion. That's not how Kevin rolls. So he literally, supernaturally floated down that aisle, and that pastor released the joy of the Lord on him. He literally starts laughing. That's the first portion of that dream where he first tapped into it. The next day... Without me there in his own house, in the own privacy of his own house, he gets zapped. Literal electricity shot through his body. When he is in the shower, while he's praying in English for his brother, he starts just flowing in tongues. Now, what do you think I had been praying? Get him, Lord. Get him so filled and crazy loaded up with you that he will totally understand what's going on. And that was way before when I was having those dreams. So... If I had not prayed, if I had not decreed, and I had not declared a thing, if I did not have faith, would have, I have seen results? I don't know, but not probably likely. Amen? But if we operate in obedience, right, if we are submitted to the Lord, he will take care of us. So I'm blessed by faith. That was deposited in me even as a youngin. All of that stuff stayed in, right? I knew what I could do with what I was taught, and I did it. And thank you, Jesus. I have a wonderful husband, a beautiful family. Thank you, Lord. So here's another cool thing. <laughs> this is so simple. When we were young, Christian was five, we needed a car. I think we had a little $5,000 in the bank for the car. We didn't want no car payment. So I get this little VW Jetta, okay? This little bad boy lasted forever from the time that child was five years old until he was about 20. Why did that car last that long? First of all, it was super cute, okay? That was my ride. And as we had that car, this is where, you know what? People speak against the prosperity message. You do you then because my God says he shall supply me. He shall take care of all my needs, okay? He has grace and he has mercy on me. I wasn't driving no fat ride that was $30,000 or higher. It was my little $5,000 paid off car, but it was cute and it was shiny and we took care of it. But I prayed over that car. I blessed that car. Thank you, Jesus, for my little car. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So when we are thankful, okay, for the things that he's done, and the blessings he's already unfolded upon us, then I do believe your faith can grow and God can honor your next need and your next request and your next hope, right? Because you did good with the small thing. He's going to deal with you and give you greater things. So this little car, when it would start acting up, 
I'd be like, oh, gosh, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for my car. I don't want another car payment. And um, I just blessed this car in Jesus' name. And that, I mean, that little bad boy never even had to go to the shop except for when I finally took that clutch out because I was driving. <laughs> so I needed to replace that, and that is the only major work that little sucker ever needed. So the point of the end of the story on that is I rolled that thing in to the neighborhood, and the bottom fell out of it. That's when it was time for me to get a new car. But where did it fall out at? In my neighborhood, right down the street from the house, because that's God's grace and mercy. That's called the favor of God. When you bless him, he be blessing you back. Amen? So, okay, so then it's time to get another car. <laughs> so you tell the Lord your need. Okay, Jesus, you see I need a car now. Now, I'm not trying to be ungrateful, but this thing can't ride no more. So we just thank you, Jesus, for another car. Lord, I don't know what kind of car I need, but that's how I talk to God, though. But it would be great to have a da 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 da, but I don't know, Lord. But this is what I need. God, I need it to be like $200 a month. I don't want it to be no more than that. I like the old days, back in the day, when you could get a car for $6,000 for $200 a month. But that's not how it is nowadays because everything's at least $20,000 or more. So, anyways, um, I had to give it to Jesus, and that's what I told him we needed to do. I kid you not. Money just came in out of nowhere. I think it was about $4,000. I was able to go put that down on that sucker. $200 a month was that car payment. I still have that car. and It is now paid off. And that little bad boy ain't been in the shop either. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. But I bless that car in Jesus' name. And I'm grateful, Jesus, for that car. Then I needed another car because, you know, you need two cars. And so that car, we drove it till about pooped out too. <laughs> so... Anyways, okay, Jesus, again, I don't want another car payment, da 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 And if I do get a car, Lord, this is what I think I would like. What do you think, God? I know you shall supply all my needs according to riches and glory. What is best for me? I don't go at him and go, I want that $50,000 car. I'm going to name it, and I'm going to claim it. That's my car in the name of Jesus. I got no money in the bank, but I'm going to just believe in the name of Jesus. That money's going to get in the bank. That's the wrong way for it. That's not how you roll. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that you're going to have a small little car and things like that. This is just my story, okay? So I pray about the car. Don't know what exactly to do. Lord, it's about time we got to do something with this car. I got blessed with a car, and it's free. I didn't have to pay anything for it. I didn't ask for it. I didn't tell somebody my need for it. It happened, though. I got two of them. Got two in the same month. Two cars free in the same month say something else that don't happen I didn't tell somebody to give me that car and it's red and that's what I said Lord please got about a little red car like I used to have back when I was 20 something and cute so got the red car so thank you Jesus you know that's moving by faith that's decreeing declaring that's telling the Lord of your need and trusting having faith okay and everything that we lost Kevin and I we got back double portioned. Devil is a liar. Okay, we learn from our mistakes. Ha ha, devil, you are under my feet. So thank you, Jesus, for that. And um, I used to have an anxiety disorder. I used to have panic attacks all the time. And but I was still a believer in that. You know, through that, I was still like, uh, uh-uh, look, thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. But this was um, created from trauma back from my child and then reopened that can of worms again on me and so you know typically I'm super joyful typically I'm outgoing and I won't shut up but <laughs> the enemy tried to take what God intended for me to be gifted in and he tried to mess that up because anxiety will shut you up put you back in the corner put you on meds and make you nervous and scared and it causes a lot of pain in your chest and you can't breathe so <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for that healing and that freedom. But I didn't stop believing. So I went to some preacher, asked him to pray for me. And I'd, I'd had little uh, blurps of it before and would get healed. But this last time that I'd had it, back when I was probably 30 years old, it hit me hard. And so the preacher I went to prayed for me. I didn't get healed. So should I just say God doesn't want to heal me? Should I just say, he just wants this to be like Paul, like the thorn in the side. That's the way I'm going to have to deal with this. This is just what he's decided is my thing. This is not my thing. I don't think so. 
Uh-uh. Because why? Because I'm a child of the Most High God. I don't have to put up with that. The devil's supposed to be under my feet. I'm supposed to walk in victory because Jesus Christ died on the cross for me and you, right? And he didn't do it in vain. He did it so I could walk out a life, a life of victory. So, anywho, well, I just kept on trying to get myself free by, I mean, I would go to the Christian bookstores, and I'd be standing at that charismatic section, <laughs> And pick out books all the time and get me all kinds of stuff. Try to do prayer books, whatever, right? But this sucker had gotten so deep. And when things get rooted, they need you. sometimes you need two or three gathered together in the name of Jesus. So, anywho, I got a hold of these other people. And I asked them to pray for me. Because there ain't no shame in my game. I don't care what you know. I want it gone. If it's a demon, get it out. Okay, yeah, I was a full-blooded, 100% Christian at this point. But guess what? A demon was attacking me with anxiety, and it wasn't mine to have. And I didn't deserve it in Jesus' name either. Amen? So these people prayed for me, and it was not a one, two, three, boom, it's out of you. It was a long minute. Like, for I don't even know, because probably at least 30 minutes or more. But anyways, it came off me. So thank you, Jesus, for that. And it was such an incredible, powerful deliverance that I didn't have to take no more medicines. I dropped them right then and there. Now, I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. I'm not saying don't take your medicines. I'm telling you this is between you and Jesus Christ himself. So I knew I didn't even have to take nothing else because I felt such a crazy power of God in that moment and a whole bunch of other cool stuff that happened. So thank you, Jesus, for that. One time I came up forward to Pastor David on a Thursday night at the Indy Church, and my back was hurting awful bad. And you know what? He prayed for me, and electricity shot through my back, and boom, I was healed. Well, that required faith, didn't it? I have to receive it. Amen. I come to him with faith, and, and then the pastor has faith to deposit. You got two faiths together. You're going to have a, a, an action, right? So... That's, that's good to know, though, because there's sometimes I literally feel an anointing on my hands, and I know I'm supposed to go pray for people, and I pray for people, and they sometimes get healed, and they sometimes get delivered, but I can feel the block. So if you ain't receiving and you ain't got no faith for it, then I, I don't think you're going to get a result. Now, if you're a straight sinner and you don't know nothing about this word of God, you probably have a mercy grace release there, and that healing will occur. But we are held accountable by the knowledge that we know so we are supposed to stand on this word of God amen okay there's times where I used to walk around or be at work or be at the Walmart and my legs would go super duper numb full-on numb like I literally couldn't keep walking and uh, so I went to the doctor got all that checked out and guess what got healed of it totally got healed of it tried to creep up on me again about two months ago and after church service I'm with Pastor Dave I'm like I don't know what's going on again but these legs are acting up again they're trying to be numb so I just need you to pray because I've been praying and it kind of wasn't making it stop because you need sometimes two or three gathered together sometimes the Bible says you got to go to the elders of the church oh we remember that okay so I went to our pastor and it was after service there was no music going or nothing anyway he prays for me and i and had another trouble with that these legs whatsoever thank you jesus because i'm not going to tolerate it in the name of jesus not my portion it's not for me in jesus name and lord if there was an opening or a door i cracked open reveal it to me so we can heal it and deal with it and get it out and gone amen so when i was a child my mom operated by some crazy faith she would you didn't get sick you couldn't have a chance to be sick because she would pray for you and you would get healed right away. My ears, one time I was clogged up real bad. I don't know if I was actually losing hearing or what, but my ears were clogged. And so she noticed I couldn't hear. I was first grader. And we did the whole test. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, 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 no. Anyway, she prayed for my ear. My ear popped open. And I could hear immediately, instantly. Pretty dramatic for me to be this old and remember that at the age of first grade, right? But it was dramatic. Um, there was a time that we were driving around in the little Jeep. And it was storming and raining was coming. But we didn't have no top on and no sides on that Jeep. Well, they, you know what that means. We're going to get soaked. And we're on the highway coming all the way from the west side back to the east side, which is super far when you come all across Indianapolis. So you don't want to be in a storm with the Jeep with the top off on the highway. But we got to get home. So my mom took authority over that storm, kind of like how Jesus did when he told the water to be still when he told the storm be still well anywho we're still cruising down the highway their storm is going all around us but right over the top of us there is no rain we did not get wet not one bit 
And I know that sounds crazy, but I'm not lying. I promise you, I'm not. It's the truth. Because God is God. He loves us. Okay? She wasn't perfect, but boy, she had some faith. I'll tell you that much. And so I would put my hand out the car and be like, oh, I'm getting wet. And then put it back in. I'm like, oh, wow, this is amazing. So there's God right there. Um, every time I had major changes, it seems like, or a job change, I would dream about that job before I got the job. So when I was in hair school, I dreamt that I saw these cert a certain salon from mirrors from the floor to the ceiling. I saw a um, conference room desk. And in this dream, they sat me down. They said, Gwen, you are promoted. And I wake up and I'm like, what in the world? Now, when you're in beauty school, they just tell you that it's going to be booth rent. You don't know anything about different levels and all this stuff. That's only at the upscale salons, but they don't teach you any of that in beauty school. So you're ignorant, totally ignorant to it. So when I got my job, uh, I went in for the interview. I'd already got hired somewhere else, and I went to this other one, and this salon had the identical mirrors that I saw in the other, in the dream. And then when you do get promoted, they literally are in the Circle Tower building of downtown Indianapolis, so you actually do go into a conference room that they, because it's a lawyer building, so anyone can use the conference room. So you literally do get sat down and get a promotion at a conference table with all the chairs around it, like a law office. What? That's not in a salon ever. So you, you can't make the stuff up. So when I had that dream, did I go make it happen? No, I did not make a dream happen or my life happen according to the dream. What happened is I walked into it in real life and God had already confirmed it with the dream. So then I knew this was the direction I'm supposed to go. So just because you have a dream about something don't mean you jump up and go run out and go do it. Okay. You still have to use the Holy Spirit wisdom. And if it teaches, if that dream says anything against the word of God, it ain't of God. Call it out. Done. Nix. Okay. And sometimes you need two or three confirmations to make sure that that was an actual fact of God. Um, then Another uh, job that I had, I dreamt about it before, and it was the busing thing, and I was, already, I was still doing hair. And so in the dream, I'm getting hired to be the bus driver, and the conversation in the dream is a certain way. In real life, I wake up the next day, scrolling on Facebook, and boom, there's Franklin Township hiring for bus drivers. That's where my kids go to school. Hey, that might work. Oh, wow, they have insurance. That's exactly what I need. So I went... I'm like, you know, I'm just going to do that. And it wasn't overwhelming at all with the way they had it set up. So I go to the job interview, and guess what? They said exactly the exact same things that, that was said in the dream. And they had the exact same setup, a, a certain training center that not all schools have that I saw in the dream they have in real life. So God is so cool because if you move by faith, you will have the things of God that he intends for you. You will walk out the call that God has on your life. Um, if, if I didn't have faith, then I would have ignored the dreams and I wouldn't have called anything such, you know? So what do you do when you have a dream like that? You say, I don't know what that was, but God, if you're calling me to do such a thing like that, or if that's where you want me to be, then I just thank you, God, that, that I will walk and do what you've called me to do. I'll have the job that you said I'm supposed to have. Any door that's closed is blocking me from going to where I'm supposed to be going in that job in Jesus name you know, that is cleared out. There'd be no holdbacks, no setbacks on what job I'm supposed to go to in the name of Jesus. But I didn't go to Studio 2000 Hair Salon and stare at the building and go, that's my job. That's my building in Jesus' name. I'm working there now. That's what I'm doing right now. It wasn't like that. It was instead, I don't know the will of God, but I know he wants the best for me, so I'm going to ask him to give me what he sees fit and best for my life. See what I'm saying, how that is different than just saying um, I'm using magic words or something weird, right? Okay, so <clears throat> here's another thing. We've had tornadoes show up. There was two tornadoes. When I was in my 20s, I was at the house. A tornado started ripping through. We had no idea it was coming. I was there by myself. He was at work. And um, anyways, it comes through, and I run into the hall. I don't have a clue what to do except grab that dog and start praying in tongues. I ain't got no English for this right now. Okay? So all I can do is, 
and we lived in the, over there at 10th and um, Cecil, and those houses are real tight close to each other. Kind of like how like Newcastle little town is where all the houses are real, real tight and you don't even have a driveway hardly. It's like that. So if their houses are getting jacked up, probably yours should be messed up too, right? My house wasn't touched. Everybody else's was crazy. This one house, I mean, they lost, right across the street, they lost their garage. They lost their boat. Trees were like, shoo, down. Cars were like tossed. And it was crazy. And I come out of my little 800 and some square foot home, which tells you we're not on much land, and nothing was touched. Super long backyard. I go to the backyard. Nothing. Nothing was it, Kevin. It wasn't even nothing. Nothing. That's a miracle. I don't care who you are. Okay, that's the favor of God on your life. Amen? So, so when we have faith, sometimes I can't decree and declare what I don't know. So I'm just going to pray in tongues in Jesus' name. And I don't care who's by me. I'm praying in tongues. Speaking of that, one time I was in downtown Indianapolis. I don't know where Michaela went, but she was with me. And... Um, She's probably a youth class. But anywho, this guy was a creeper, and he kept trying to track her down. It was the weirdest thing I ever seen in my life. Downtown Indianapolis, fully flooded with people. And then we get away from him, and then um, we're by ourselves for a second because uh, Candace had to get back to the car to go do something. So we're going to stand on the big corner right in front of everybody. I think it was like right by Pennsylvania and Washington Street. Shouldn't have no problems here because it's super loaded with people. And that same creeper just shows up out of nowhere. So my back's to him, and little Michaela's here, and she's looking. She's like, oh, my gosh, Quinn, he's here. <laughs> I turn around, and he's all like, Bleh. crazy, drugged out, scary as scary as you can imagine on a movie. And then, oh my goodness, I put that child behind me and all I could do is go, he was like, you praying in tongues at me? I'm like, I have no English, nothing. <laughs> and I was scared to run because I don't want to lose my friend. So anyway, as soon as my friend came, we were safely able just to walk away from that. But I knew I just knew. You know how you know? I knew it was causing a barrier. You can't even come past that line, can you? You cannot. Um, we were walking around in Chicago and with Kevin Christian Branson. And so I'm just walking. We're having a great time walking by the Trump Tower. And there's like highways above your head. And I might have told you all this story before, but it's mind-blowing. Um, so we're walking through, and all of a sudden I feel a demonic presence. Just I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like you just walked right through it. And so I was like, oh, that ain't good. So I'm going to decree and declare a thing. Uh-uh, I rebuke you, devil. You're a liar. Get away from us right now in Jesus' name. Because I don't know what else to pray. And then Brandon, Brand, he's like, what's the matter, mama? I'm like, ain't something ain't right. Better start praying. So he starts doing his thing. We're all on a single file line because it's a really skinny little sidewalk. And I kid you not, it might have been just minutes after that. This giant chunk of cement tried, broke off of the highway and went <laughs> right behind Kevin's head. And almost crushed his head. And I mean, it was a big old sucker. Chunk fell off the highway. Like the cement that holds up the highway. <laughs> What's the likelihood of that weirdness happening? So that's the power of God right there. That's called mercy grace, right? But I, you got to be obedient in the first place. So if you ain't obedient to the heating and the warnings, then I don't know how you're going to have any benefits, you know? So it's not my power. Not my might, right? But by his spirit, which I got to use his spirit. So in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, death and life are in the power of your tongue. Even scientists know this about a plant, right? They know if they play heavy, hard rock junk over a plant, it doesn't grow, right? But if they do like Mozart or something pretty, it'll be fine. So how can scientists figure that out? But Christians think it's funny to say that. Because this, this Bible is full of promises. And those promises will only resonate if we put it in our ear and we speak it out, right? And we know that the enemy, that the principalities and rulers of darkness that are floating around in this first heaven here, that they have to hear that for them to have to go. Amen? It's because we have to exercise our authority. Because when I use the word of God, that's the sword. So, got to go. Sorry, bud. Gots to go. And if you don't know about that, that's the first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. You can study that. It's super, super neat and neat to understand, but we can't go deep in that. 
Proverbs 13, 2 through 3. You might just like jot these things down because I'm going to just keep rolling so we don't run out of time. But um, from the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. But the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives. But those who speak rashly will come to ruin. So it's telling you that when you speak negative things, you just it's, it's not good for us. We come into agreement with the devil, basically, is what you're doing when you speak negative things. So let's go to the story about Abraham. Abraham... This is a neat story. So you know he's old, right? He's 75 years old in the story back here in Genesis. And Abraham is now going to be called the father of many nations. So God's like, so you're going to be the father of many nations. So your name is Abram. But right now, at 75 years old, I'm going to change you to Abraham. And then what did that name mean? Well, it was a prophetic name, right? His name, his new name given to him by God was father of many nations. So anytime you spoke to Abraham, you were saying, you the father of many nations. You the father of many nations. You prophesying over him. You are the father of many nations for 25 years. So what did the father of many nations mean? It means at 75 years old, he was told, you're going to have a son with your old wife. And your son and you are going to be the seed, right? And that's going to bring Jesus Christ. And, and they're going to be the heirs of the kingdom of God. And anyone that believes in the son and receives his blood are also going to be the same heirs. What does that mean? We're supposed to receive blessings. Amen. Rebuke the curses all the way back to Adam and Eve and now receive the blessings of Abraham. Yes, Lord. Thank you very much. We shall and we will. <laughs> so in Romans 4, 3, it says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. What does that mean? That means that he had to believe God's promise about him at 75 years old and wait on that promise for 25 years for him to have that promised son. Now, they weren't perfect through that, were they? No, they totally goofed up. So what his wife, Sarah, she says, go be with my handmaiden. And they had Ishmael. And then what happened with that? So Ishmael and his mama get sent off. And out of that, you get that whole Muslim faith. So in their sin of trying to bring about what they think God promised them. So God did promise them something, but it was on his will and in his way, not in our own making or our own doing. Because when we do it in our way and our own doing and our own timing and somehow it didn't match up to the word of God, then you got sin in that. So that's what happened. Sarah said, go ahead and be with my handmaiden. They produced a son basically out of wedlock. That was not what God wanted. He wanted it to be Sarah and Abraham's DNA. Come on, guys. So then you've got this issue now. So that's an awesome lesson to learn. Amen. So Romans 4.13. For the promise to, hang on, make sure I got that all. Yes. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that, he would be the heir of, heir of the world, did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It came through Abraham's righteousness and the fact that he had faith in that for 25 years. For it, wait a minute, for it, for if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. So if there's no faith, then that promise is gone. So you had, he had to have the faith. Let's make sure we understand that. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. Number 16, verse 16. That is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring. That's powerful. I like that one. Not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written... I have made you the father of many nations. Just on that little part. I have made you the father of many nations. This is when he's 75 years old. I made you the father of many nations. Now, I will make you the father of many nations. So let's think about that. When we decree, when we declare, when we have faith, do we say, 
Well, I will be healed. Or do we say, I am healed in Jesus' name. I come into agreement with it right this minute. Okay, in the presence of God. Hang on, I lost my place. Yes, that's right. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Call into existence the thing that does not exist by using the word. In the hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told so shall your offspring be he did not weaken in faith and when he considered his own body which was as good as dead because it was so old or when he considered the barrenness of sarah's womb no unbelief made him waver concerning the promises of god that's going to be our case too right we ain't gonna have no unbelief we ain't going to have no doubt in Jesus' name. Because if we do, that's why you're not seeing results. That's why you're not having miracles. You can't have the doubt and unbelief in Jesus' name, okay? But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. All of it's for the glory of God. Fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words it counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised... Uh, from the dead, Jesus, our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Now, I went deep on that because that is the point of the story. Abraham is an amazing stamp on this um, belief that we have to have faith. And if we don't, then we don't get the promises. What made Abraham in right standing and righteous? It was because he believed God. He didn't believe the word of another. He didn't believe crazy thoughts that came in. Well, for five seconds he did with Sarah, I guess. But other than that, for 25 years, he had to wait for that promise to be fulfilled that was told that it's now. But it still was a 25-year waiting period. So if you are in Christ, then you are also Abraham's offspring, right? Which means you are heirs to the promise. According to the promise. The promise was to Abraham and his seed, which is all of us that have received Jesus Christ. <clears throat> all right, now let's talk about faith specifically. God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So we can't determine what faith is according to our life experiences, especially if they're negative. Amen? Amen. So if it didn't work out so great in someone else's life, that doesn't mean that's your life. You don't know what was in the background there. There's some a lot of quiet situations. There's bloodlines. There's DNA things going on. You cannot determine what this faith means by someone else's circumstances. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6 through 12. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those that seek him. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place and receive the inheritance. And when he went out, not knowing where he was going, by faith, he went to live in the land of promise. So he was just trusting in the Lord the whole time through, wasn't he? In the foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with them the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder was God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive. And even when she was past the age, since she was considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born. Talk about Abraham being so old. <laughs> it's almost like, oh, you're old. Anyway, we're born descendants as many as the stars from heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. The faith that God approves of is a faith that is able to surrender God's promises back to him with the confidence that God will fulfill those promises according to his timing, his plan, and his purpose. So we got to get out of the way. We can't put our own plan to it, our own will, and think it out. And, oh, this is how he's going to do it. And I bet you he'll do it that way. Stop. Because then that's when you lose your faith. Because you aren't trusting no more. Because you put your own action in, in, into the plan. Versus following 
what the Holy Spirit tells you to do by that proper action. Mark eleven twenty two through 25. And Jesus said to them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says this mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Is that the word of God? And that's true, isn't it? So we got we to gotta have no doubt in our heart. <clears throat> Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. Boom. That would be why you might not see results. So, so when we don't get what we need and we ain't got what we want and it's not working, when you said decree, declare, thing it shall be, dee, 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 dee. A confession, did it? I, I found a scripture. I'm standing on this scripture. It didn't work. Did you need to forgive somebody? It's a huge, important point. So, we just thank you, Jesus, for revealing anything that would be hidden in our heart. Amen. All right, Matthew 17, 20. Because of your little faith, truly I say to you, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will say this mountain to be moved from here to there, it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing is supposed to be impossible. That's how we're supposed to look at it all. We're not supposed to label it, well, he might not, he, you know, maybe he thinks this, maybe God thinks that. I can't look at it that way. I have to look at it from the, from the focus of faith, from the eyes of faith. Let's talk about the word, the word of God. This word is his actual word, right? Psalms 107.20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. With his what? His word. All right, which is Jesus in the flesh coming up next too. John 1.1. 1, 1. This is the introduction to Jesus Christ himself. When John explains, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So then it's just like, then to prove the word as a, uh, was as powerful on earth as it is in heaven, it's like God clothed his word with flesh and sent him here to earth. And here, the word, which is Jesus, did the same works that the father did. As he spoke the earth into existence with his word. And Jesus spoke his word. And it had to be. Right? And then we're supposed to follow that example. Only because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Right? So John 14, 12 through 14. <clears throat> Truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these things shall you do, because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask for in my name, which is Jesus Christ, I will do that. The Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. He just said he's going to do it. And as long as his Father's glorified, then you better testify. That's how he gets the glory. We have to speak out the promises of God. You know, whatever you're talking about is what you actually really believe. And we're not perfect. And I got to watch my own mouth. But when I start speaking and it ain't right, I need to get back and correct it and repent. And ask the Lord to forgive that. And get the scriptures that are opposite of that to get it straight in my heart. Amen? So I won't act like that no more. The word of God is so many amazing things, but it helps with deliverance. It helps with healing. And it helps in ministry. 2 Corinthians 1, 20. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. Oh, that's like that song. All your promises are yes and amen. It wasn't just a cute song. <laughs> it's a scripture. That is why it is through him 
that we utter our amen to God for his glory. Again, he's saying those promises are for us, but he gets all the glory. I'm just going to say, how's he going to get the glory if you ain't testifying? You say, that's just between me and God in my little closet. And that's okay for some things. I understand that. But come on, man. You can build someone else's faith. By telling them how you had the victory it doesn't mean you're bragging because it wasn't you anyway. It was the greater is he that is in you, right? Than he that is in the world. And you're just trying to encourage your friend to take the, the tools and let's use them. We can speak out the promises of God, which are the scriptures, the word of God, even if it's the opposite of what is going on in the natural. Because we are a supernatural people. Amen. Again, it's not a magic potion. It's not magic words. It's called the scriptures. I'm obedient. I'm going to do what it said. And I'm going to get results because I got results when I was in my 20s and didn't even know that much. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> the key is to make sure we renew our minds. Renew our minds to the word of God and calling those things that do not exist as though they did through the promises of God's word. Now, I'm just going to say this and bless, bless me, Lord, if I'm wrong, please help me, Jesus. But that word of faith movement in the 70s and 80s, there might have been a couple people that misunderstood what the point was. Okay. The point was not to do things inappropriate with it and be like, like I told you, oh, the $50,000 car. Oh, that's mine. I name it. I claim it. Da, 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 da. It's it's deeper than that. I think feel like what we're going through explains how deep it is. It's for our protection. It's for our family. It's it's for our needs to be met. But don't you think the devil would try to mess up a good thing? Don't you think he would try to come in there with some backward version of it? Don't you think he would try to knock it away and out of the church for us to have our victory and have us to operate in authority? Don't you think? Of course, he would come in and try to get rid of that stuff. That way, you don't get your miracles. That way, you don't have any signs and wonders. That way, you don't have any expectation for it. I don't think so, though, because the devil's a liar, and we got the word of God right here to tell us otherwise. If Jesus is who he says he is, then why don't we believe he will bless us, heal us, or provide for us all the time? What is the confession of your mouth? What is the confession of my mouth? We've got to watch what we confess over ourselves. Amen? So, <clears throat> Revelations 12, 11. They overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words that come out of their mouth. The word of the testimony. What are we confessing with our words? Are we speaking life or are we speaking death? Do we have the victory or are we defeated? We're, we are not going to win a battle by confessing and giving props to what the devil's doing. Instead, we need to confess what Jesus has already provided. Right? Get our tool belt out. This Bible. It's not new age because that's a claim that has been put against Having the victory, having the authority over the enemy, decreeing and declaring a thing, having confessions. That is so demonic to even say that. I can't even believe it. My husband would not be here with me the way we are right now if, we did, if I wasn't doing that. So, no, it's not demonic. And New Age, we know about that, too, because his mother is into that stuff. And they just believe they're not sick. So they just think they're not sick. And they don't go to doctors and all this kind of silly stuff. And But they're version is their own mind over matter not the power of God not by faith not by what Jesus did on the cross because they don't even think they need a savior so no we ain't in the same category none of this is by us it's only by the cross that's it we're just taking the benefits of the kingdom of God and coming to agreement with it and not in agreement with the devil and his plan for our life amen that's right thank you Jesus that is what I'm talking about. Let's talk about sickness when we come into that issue. In Exodus 23, 25, worship the Lord and his blessings will be on your food and on your water. And I will take away sickness from among you. How did you get that? By worshiping the Lord. 
How do we worship the Lord? The Bible says in obedience. When we are in obedience to the word of the Lord, we are worshiping the Lord. And he will take away your sickness. <clears throat> Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. He didn't do that cross all in vain. It was more than just salvation. Amen? It was to make us children of his. 1 Peter 2, 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on that tree so that we may die to sin and live in righteousness. And by his wounds, you've been healed. There it is again. Thank you, Jesus. I receive it. That is mine in Jesus' name and for my family. Matthew 8, 17. He took, um, he took my infirmities and he bore my sicknesses. Didn't say some of them. Didn't say anything else, but yes, he did. Now, now you're going to have the, the issue where this didn't get healed. That person didn't get healed. If your prayers are not working and you didn't get results, we've talked about some of those things already, but then you want to put on the full armor of God. That's Ephesians 6. So you would just need to go to that and decree and declare that over you in that way. Your flesh will actually come into agreement with it. And we can't get into Ephesians 6 right now because it's just so much information. The prayers of the righteous are what prevail. The, the righteous ones is what the scriptures say, that the Lord answers the prayers of the righteous. So sin is a transgression of the law. So it, it blocks when our prayers are not getting answered. If our prayers are being answered and we're living a sinful life, then that's just mercy and grace. But again, you're held accountable to how much knowledge you have in this word. So that grace and mercy, don't take advantage of it. Just do what you need to do so we can have the best outcome. We have to stand our ground on scripture. Are you standing your ground on the scripture for that circumstance or that thing that you're doing? Now again, I get to work with her. And she literally says, I'm standing on this scripture over this situation. I'm like, yes, how cool someone gets that. That is so awesome, especially, you know, to be outside of your church. That, thank you, Jesus. But we have to stand on a scripture over that circumstance. Stick it on the fridge. Put it on the mirror. Quote it. Memorize it. Get it in you. Amen? Um, be sure the promises of God cover what you're asking for. So you can't ask for something that's outside of his will because then you're going against his will. So you got to learn how to pray that. Again, that's why you pray a lot in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does help guide and lead you how to pray about things. But I definitely always pray, okay, God, I need a car. You know what kind of car um, that is best for me. I know you know which car will run the longest. I don't want to just go pick it out and be mesmerized how gorgeous it is because what if that's the one that puts me in the shop every month? No, thank you. Okay, so you can go to God for all those neat things. Like, he's that awesome. Okay, so what about this? Do you have a religious spirit? That could be why you're not operating in faith. That could be why your prayers are not getting answered, right? Um, what about, do you guys know about Smith Wigglesworth? When he would pray somebody back to life from the dead, you ain't coming in that room if you didn't have no faith. He would tell you, get out. Right? Because he didn't want no doubt. He didn't want no unbelief. So he didn't want no religious spirit in there saying, well, da 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 da. Smith Wigglesworth knew when it's time to lay hands on that person and get him back to life, he's going to do it. And he needed no religious spirit and no doubt and unbelief. And you know what? What is a religious spirit? Well, what did the Pharisees do to Jesus? Right? They were, they knew of God. They knew the Torah. They studied that thing inside and out. They, they just knew better than everybody, didn't they? But are you kidding me? We're wearing all these fancy clothes, and we're the religious leaders of this area. And then this little rugged Jesus with his long hair shows up. And we know he's got long hair because he's a Nazarite. But anyway, but anyway, Jesus shows up, and he can operate in signs, wonders, and miracles. And he says he's the son of God, and he is God. But they didn't like that. But he was the fulfillment of the law. They were who he, they, he was who they were waiting on, but they were blind because they had a religious spirit on them. Are you serious? So, anywho, 
A religious spirit will tell you God can't. A religious spirit will say, he can't be anointed to do that. I study the word of God longer and stronger than he would ever study it. Now, I've not been able to lay hands and do that on someone and they actually get healed. You can't think like that. That's a religious spirit. Now, you're allowed to judge the fruit, yes, but you have to be very careful about that. And that religious spirit in you can be removed. So all you got to do is say, Lord, I don't know if that's what thing going on. Sometimes we don't even know what is going on inside of us. But if I got anything that's not of you, Jesus, please get it out. Because there's, a, there's obviously a problem. Because I've done prayed this and it didn't get handled yet. So it ain't his fault. It's going to be the flesh's fault. So in Jesus' name, Lord, please reveal to me whatever's in the way. Whatever door got cracked open. Is it someone in my household? Is it something else in the house that ain't right that we need to get rid of? So that way we can have the full plan of God in this household you have to take over doubt and unbelief so maybe you got a little doubt and unbelief maybe that's why your prayers are being hindered in James 1 6 it says but let him ask in faith without doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind so God don't like doubt what's in your family history is there blessings or are there curses half time you don't even know you don't. So what can you do about that? Go to the Lord about it. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, reveal all things in Jesus' name. Because if there's anything that is not of Jesus Christ in this DNA bloodline all the way back to Adam and Eve, thank you, Father God, you're going to reveal it to me. And we're going to put it under our feet right now in Jesus' name and wash it in the blood. Because it's not going to be a part of this household. So I, I got to deal with it so it don't go on to my child. Amen? Um, lost my place. Recognize the source of the opposition. So you need, you have a prayer request to the Lord, and it's not getting answered. What is the source of the opposition? Is there demons blocking it? The Bible says it could be. Remember in Daniel? Daniel chapter 10. Can't go through it right now. But... Remember, he was praying and fasting, and the Lord was trying to send him an angel to give him an amazing message about the end times. And because of Daniel's 21 days of fasting and praying, this angel was able to break through an attack. So the angel was being attacked by demons. It says the prince of Persia. So principalities and rulers. So it was attacking and blocking this angel from coming. Well, what saved the angel? His prayers. Daniel's praying. His decree and declaring, confessing the word of God's fasting. Um, that is what released this angel to do his duty and his job. Are you releasing your angels? God says we're allowed to. Release your angels, Lord, in Jesus' name over this situation. Thank you, God, for sending in the seraphim and the cherubim to release your glory. Thank you, Father God, for your archangels that are warriors that are going to fight in Jesus' name for this battle. Send it over this territory in the name of Jesus. Tear up any kind of enemy, any kind of principality that would try to block the people of God from hearing the word of God in Jesus' name. Da, 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 da. See what I'm saying? So that could be an issue. Uh, sometimes we just need to fast more. That would be me. I need to do that because I don't like doing it, but I, I need to do it. Being thankful and and be um, being thankful and blessing what you do have, amen. So I could say some things about my life as a child. Well, why, why did this? Why did that? But then, but I know. But what about this? But what about the fact that in my childhood there was a lot of rough stuff? But what, God gave me like the coolest dad ever. How'd you turn out? Okay, Gwen. What? Well, have you met my dad? He is like mom, dad, all up, wrapped up in one amazing sauce. And Jesus, of course. But there's so many things. Like, you can't stay in hurt. You can't stay in trauma and stay in that place. We got to move forward. We got to see what God did do, how he pulled you out, and be, and be um, grateful and thankful and bless what you do have. 
Operate with Holy Spirit wisdom. Ask for mercy and grace over the situation because mercy and grace is off the chain amazing because it surpasses any law. It, it covers it all. It's amazing. It's like God says, do it this way, do it that way, go by the blood, do this, do that. But the mercy and grace goes, I just got all of it. Right? So ask for the mercy and grace. When you are praying for someone, you can't go against their will. They didn't want that freedom in that department, then they, they might not. You can pray for a window of opportunity to come to them, that they will have an understanding, they will have a revelation moment, but it's still up to them. So doesn't mean that you didn't pray hard enough, but you can pray other ways to help get that opening in. God, send other people there, send this, do that. So you, you don't know what that person's will is sometimes. You may think you know so again, then that does not mean that God didn't want to heal them, deliver them, set them free. doesn't mean you didn't pray right exactly. It just means that God knows everything. We don't know everything. And there's more to the story. <clears throat> now also, this is an interesting story. God can judge you and turn you over to sin. And you've heard of a reprobate mind. Okay, so if you don't think that's not a block... <laughs> It is. And so Kenneth Hagin, he had an anointing for laying hands on people and things like that. And he went to go pray for this man. And he was like in his 60s. And he's like, I'm praying for him in English, you know. And he's like, I, as I'm praying, I just can't say be healed. It just won't come. And he's like, okay, Holy Spirit, what's going on? And he just kept on trying. And he just couldn't say be healed. And so I think he walks out and goes talk to the Lord about this. And God says, I have given him over to judgment. He said, I've been working on him for 36 years. I've given him mercy and grace that you're asking for. I gave it to him for 36 years. And he says, so now is the judgment. And he said, but have comfort in this. In this, he has surrendered his heart to me. And now he's coming to me to be home with me. He goes, so let him come. I'm ready for him. So God knows whether that guy's life is in any further jeopardy of not making it to heaven. But this is that moment in his life that this is the right time and the window for him to get to heaven, which that's our goal anyways, right? Amen. And I'm going to hurry up. I realize I need to stop. Um, is it God's will to heal? Well, Matthew 8, 1 through 3. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, can you make me clean? Well, Jesus reached out and touched the man. I'm willing. That's what he said. Be clean. Immediately he was cleaned of his leprosy. John 9, 1 through 7. As he went along, he saw a blind man that was blind from birth. And the disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he is born blind? Well, geez, they understand the curses, don't they? That sin opens the door for curses. Trauma opens the door for curses. And bloodlines all the way back. But Jesus answered and said, Neither this man nor his parents had sinned, but this has happened so that the work of God might be displayed in him. So in this situation, we don't know all the situations, but this man did get healed. He's told to put mud on his eyes and then go wash it off. So be willing to do the unthinkable <laughs> and have trust and faith. Mark 9, 21 through 29. This is about the kid with the gnashing teeth, foamy mouth. He has epilepsy. And um, I'm trying to skip around. So Mark 9, 21 through 29. Let's go to 22. And sometimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can't do anything and have, wait, if you can't, if, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can't believe, then all things are possible to him that do believe. <clears throat> And straight away, the father of the child cried out, and he said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. So we can say that too. God, help me. Give me faith. Help my unbelief. I have belief in Jesus' name. I have the gift of faith, which is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I have that in the name of Jesus. You can proclaim that over yourself. Verse 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying to them, Thou deaf and dumb spirit, I charge thee, you better come out of him in Jesus' name and enter him no more. The spirit cried and rent that child's sore and came out of him. And he was one dead, insomuch that many said, Oh, my goodness, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and arose him. 
And he arose, and when he was come to the house, the disciples asked him privately, why didn't we get to cast him out? He said, because this one came out by prayer and fasting. Fasting. There it is again. And oh, wait, he didn't need a healing. He needed a deliverance. So you need the Holy Spirit to let you know which is a what, right? So, um, do if you take away your faith, what you got left? If you believe the fact that God doesn't always want to help you and doesn't want to heal you, what do you have left? What, what's the point of singing half of our worship songs? Half of them do say, our God is the one that heals, right? Without faith, we can't even have hope in this word. We can't create our faith according to the circumstances and the others that we have seen. It depends what is in our heart and what we are thinking, right? Yes, we know there was a thorn in Paul, and it kept him from what? Being conceited. So it had a reason. That doesn't mean God wanted to hurt him, right? It had a whole different purpose. That man was so crazy anointed that people thought he was a mythological god or a Greek god. So, yeah, God had to make sure something was in there to make sure they all knew he was human. Don't you worship that guy. And he didn't want him to get full of himself, right? Because he loved him and he didn't want him to not make it to heaven and get conceited. So we don't always understand God's timing or plans. And I'm going to wrap it up there. But let's just pray. We thank you, Jesus, for faith. And we thank you, Father, for hope and love. And without the love, we're just a clanging symbol anyway. So we just thank you, Father, for your heart to be in us. And I just thank you we have the mind of Christ, the voice of a stranger we will not listen to. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're the one that reveals all truth. I thank you, Father God, that we will walk out a life of the supernatural, that we are Christians. We, we, yes, we have faith in Jesus Christ, that he's the son of God, and that he died for our sins on that cross, and we receive him as our king. But we also do agree in Jesus' name that we are his children and that we have an inheritance in Jesus' name. So we thank you for that inheritance to operate in signs, wonders, and miracles and to have a healthy life, a life that all of our um, needs are met in the name of Jesus. And we have no fear to claim the word of God over our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pull every thought captive in Jesus name that is not of God in Jesus name we praise you father God and we thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing in Jesus mighty holy name amen